Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be changing the fuel filters on a 3.0 Power Stroke. So, this video is the continuation of us trying to give some love to our 3.0 Power Stroke that we have here at the shop. We're going to show you today how to change the fuel filters on it. Now, um, the fuel filter kit at the time of this filming is Motorcraft part number FD4627. That gets you the uh, fuel filter water separator that goes underneath of the uh, truck and we'll show you that here in just a minute and then this also gets you the top side filter uh, that we will be replacing in the engine compartment now really nothing you need here uh, special tools wise I do suggest having a 32 metric uh, socket to be able to get the filter element out on the frame rail but what I did want to show you was uh, we ordered the fuel filter elements and they actually sent us this whole kit uh, at one time. This is a separate part number. This gets you the entire fuel filter housing, the new water and fuel sensor, or uh, I'm sorry, the new electrical portion here, uh, new water drain and everything. But I wanted to show you on this fuel filter, it's kind of a little bit different here. Um, it has a stop on the fuel filter. And if you can see that right there, that fuel, that little stop on the fuel filter, once you tighten it, it can only go so far. Mounted on the fuel filter canister assembly. A little bit easier to see there. And hopefully you can see inside of there. I think Adam's gonna do some lighting adjustment. You can kind of see there where that fuel filter stops. It's a little bit different. Um, just wanted to show it from the uh, entire element uh, picture so you know what you're looking at. But yeah, this kit that we told you the part number on the FD4627, that gets you both your frame mounted filter and the engine mounted filter. So let's go ahead and get started with our install. All right, we're down on the frame mounted uh, fuel filter. Now frame mounted fuel filters, they serve two purposes. One, uh, well, it's kind of three purposes, but one is to uh, usually they're water separators as well as fuel filters. And then its second purpose in life is to absolutely drown you in fuel when you go to change it. So uh, these are evil little, evil little things. So uh, cheers to you guys that are doing this. So what you, what I like to do on the three O's is the water separator. I just open it all the way up before I start taking my skid plate off. And then that gives it time to start if you have, don't have any water in there, you're not gonna get anything when you first open it. I run it all the way out until I can see the O-ring on the element. And once I see the O-ring on it, then it'll, it'll usually run a little fuel out. So I'll let that drain while I'm taking the skid plate off, 13 metric, and there's four of these bolts. You'll see them real quick. get everything out of this canister you're just trying to get it a little bit lower to where you just don't have to absolutely bathe in it so um word on this too you don't want to work on low side fuel system on 3 power strokes unless the truck's been off for about 30 seconds or better uh that way you know uh the pressure's off the system so you're good to go so let's go ahead and use our 32 metric and remember don't turn this the wrong way because it's got a lock on it um it will it will get you and get to go there. All right, so we'll go ahead and buzz her off. <coughs> comes the drowning part. I'll just kind of get out of its way. Just like that. I think those of you all that have watched videos with me in them know that I'm also more prone than your average user to get drowned in fuel. So that's just part of how it is. Remove the red cap from the new fuel filter. Make sure that you lubricate the O-ring very carefully. Make sure your water and fuel is tight. Start the cartridge back in. Give her a couple turns before you hit her with the ratchet. And there we go. And just go ahead and run this in. We'll turn this around till it 
catches on its lock stopper. Should be just about any time. That's it. All right, now we go ahead and put our skid plate back up. These have a little bit of blue Loctite on them. I put some on last time I did this, so didn't need it again, but if you want to throw a little bit more on there, be my guest. tightening of the skid plate. All right, and that's got us done under here. Time to move topside. All right, so now we're topside. We're going after this fuel filter that's all the way on the back of the motor here, and Adam's just kind of on the outside here, and we're gonna start pushing everything off. So you wanna take your little shield off here and just pull straight up on it. All right. And this is what we're after. You need a five metric Allen as well to get this. So to get to that back fitting, um, I like to take the, uh, I like to take the, um, uh, the blue side off first. So to get it, to get this fuel line off, you just push the, Push that connect up if you can see it. I hope Adam, you need a little more light. You good? Okay. All right. And then once you have the safety catch up, you just go and pinch beside of it, and then that will release the pressure off of that. I'm gonna leave that right there because all I did was I wanted to get that out of my way for just a second so I can get to my back fuel fitting. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna lift up on that, and then as you can see, there's another fuel fitting there. This one doesn't have a safety catch. You just pinch either side of it and push it off like so. So now we want to get the outlet side. Right, so your yellow one, which is your outlet side, you just turn, get your safety latches up on it. And then pinch the tabs. And now you'll have to get it moving, so probably best to go ahead and loosen up your clamp with your five metric Allen. Loosen that up a little bit more, and that just gonna let you to where you can move that fuel filter back and forth like so. So now I can get my outlet side off, and we're going to move this hose back to where Adam can see it. See it, Adam? All right. We're going to loosen it up just a little bit more once that is freed up. Easiest just to go ahead and move your filter out like so. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the rubber ring out as well. So you see they both come out there for the fuel filter. All right. Now, your filter will come with a yellow cap on it and a clear cap. Your yellow cap is there to let you, remind you which way it needs to go back into the bracket. So let me pull my yellow cap off here. And we'll just ease it on in. And you may have to Open up. Open the clamp up just a little bit more. And there it goes. I like to 
just turn it over there and before I put my lines on, I'll snug the Allen headed bolt back down. All right, now I'm gonna put my outlet line on. Make sure before you do that, that the safety is up. Like so. And then push it till it clicks and then put your safety on. Then pull the clear cover off the back like so. And get your 90 degree elbow. Push it on, then put the blue line on, push it till it clicks and then put your safety down. And I wish I could tear that tag off so you guys could see. And there's your top side fuel filter installed. So all I'm gonna do now, I'm not gonna make you guys suffer through this. We're gonna just tighten this down. We're just gonna snug it down with our five metric to where it can't move. And that's all she needs. And then we'll show you the proper bleeding procedure. To bleed the truck after you change the frame mounted fuel filter and the one up on the engine, you just come in, leave your foot off the brake and hit the um, key on button. You'll let it run about 30 seconds. You'll want to make sure that you kind of peek out underneath the hood, see if you don't have any leaks. Um, when this is in full accessory mode, it'll run about 30 seconds. You'll hear gurgling in the back. You can kind of pick that up right there. That's the system processing air. Let it run about 30 seconds and shut it off. And then do it again. And when you fire it up this time, you'll let it run another 30 seconds. And then what we'll do here is we'll do this actually uh, two more times. We'll, we'll be looking to run your lift pump for uh, three 30 second cycles. The system will process its own air. And on the third time it should start. And I'm gonna let it run for just a second and double check some stuff here. And then we will start it. Okay, should start here. Okay, if the truck doesn't start, what you'll want to do is you're going to want to shut the obviously stop cranking it. Go out to the top side fuel filter, the blue uh, blue connection that we showed you fuel hose just unhook it let it burp air hook it back on get back in the truck do the three thirty second cycles again and you'll be good to go you won't have any problem so 3-0 power stroke if you got any questions just give us a call and we're going to connect you in this video to a uh, page where you can purchase the uh, fuel filters the motorcraft fuel filters for this truck so got any questions just give us a call thank you